Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. Now, we haven't looked at any filament on the channel here in a while. And when Matter Hackers reached out and offered to let me take a look at the new Build Series PLA, I thought it would be fun. So let's do it. Okay, so I just got back from Arizona uh, where I was at for a couple of weeks on a business trip and when Matter Hackers reached out to me I said I'd love to take a look at this but they had to ship it over to my hotel. So they actually did that for me and I ran prints every night on my Prusa Mark III um, in the hotel room. Now Matter Hackers sent me two rolls of the PLA. They sent me a roll of the white and a roll of the blue. and little secret is is that this is actually the same as their old PLA not the pro series but their lower end line however it's being rebranded as the build series now and the price is dropped significantly to make it a more affordable everyday PLA for people so what I did is if you can see the models here and I will show you details of each of these uh, with the exception of a few of these, I ran the same models with both the white and the blue, the same G-code files, because I wanted to see the difference in behavior from the same filament lines. Now, what I did, trying to keep this uh, as close to a real-world test or a real-world look at the filament, is I actually used the default Prusa generic PLA uh, profile in Slick 3R or Slicer, uh, in Prusa Slicer, because I wanted to try to get the same out-of-the-box experience that a lot of the users out there would use. I didn't want to use a tuned profile and try to peak the performance of it. I wanted to be able to see how it performed out-of-the-box. So with that, it did pretty good. Uh, let's take a look at these here. Um, in the blue and in the white, I ran the, the Death Star City, and I will show you a zoom in on these. It actually did a little bit better on the white. Um, I actually broke the spires off these because I was traveling, but it did print the spires. And on, of course, on the back side of these is the Death Star itself. Now, when I say it did a little bit better on the white, all of the detail is there on the blue, um, however, the color shows um, less flaws in it. it. It looks better in the white. Um, I did notice with the default settings, it does have a tendency to spider web. Uh, I don't really want to call it stringing, but it's more like little wispy spider webs that can actually be just picked off or uh, pulled or blown off with a, a hot glue gun. Um, I also ran the Maker's Muse tolerance test with both of them to see how they compared and these actually spun free with all but the tightest setting which was uh, 0 0.05 so all the way up to the 0 0.1 uh, these both spun freely and did pretty good and again I'll show you a zoom in on these here then of course I ran the requisite benches and again except for the spider webbing they are near identical um, in this case the blue actually looked a little bit better on the hull but the white looked a little bit better on the upper surfaces I ran my makers coin on both of them and the white actually looks very awesome on the first layer it fills in just perfectly um, it looked really nice there. Now, the last two models that I ran, this is a, um, a bridging test that's intended to use the uh, linear acceleration feature and show that. And again, I'll show you a zoomed in window on these, but the acceleration test, except for that little bit of stringing, these both came out really well. It did really good in the bridging test on both of these. 
And then, of course, the last one was the Sparky Face 5 uh, uh, soup, soup Tin Kelly that she had designed for me. Now, this was printed at the fast setting um, without support on, on either of these. So it did really well. Uh, and, of course, you'll notice that the top one here, if anybody's following me on Facebook, this was a lesson learned. Um, I was printing in the hotel room, and I flipped the light switch by the door not realizing that the printer was on that outlet. And of course, I had the power protection disabled because I was printing in uh, quiet mode um, on it because I was in the hotel room. So that didn't come out recoverable, but it did show me enough of the print to show me that it's very consistent with the white, and they both came out looking really good. If anything, just slightly over extruded, and that could be potted back just a little bit from the LCD or in your slicer. And, of course, I printed this in the blue just as an experiment. Um, still, I never cleaned up the support off of it, but I did the Triceratops taco holder. And uh, that was just a little fun little print, and I need to clean that up so I can give this to my daughter. But that came out nicely. Now, when I took measurements with the filament, um, this was tangled up. This was about mid-spool. I ran all of the prints first between doing it. And when I took the measurements with the caliper, on both the white and the blue, I was consistently measuring between 1.71 and 1.74. So it was about a 0 0.03 uh, variance there, peaking at, out at a 0 0.74, which explains a little bit of over-extrusion that we have here at the default profile. So with that said, um, anybody that has a default profile already set up for eSun or other generic filaments like that, the Matter Hackers Build Series PLA should be drop-in ready for you. You shouldn't have to run a lot of extrusion tests, maybe one print just to uh, find out if you're over or under extruding a little bit and, and bring that back a little bit. But in general, it should be drop-in for you using those generic settings. And that's about it. The price point on the series is in the $20 range. So it is intended to compete with the lower cost filaments so that it can become your everyday filament. When you take the price point and you consider that Matter Hackers has free shipping within the United States, add in the factor of the support and the team behind Matter Hackers, it's actually a fairly decent bargain uh, for the filament at that price point. So that's it. That's my first look for you here at the new Matter Hackers build series. I also have some of the Matter Hackers build series uh, PETG that I will be trying to take a look at this weekend and over the next week now that I'm back from my business trip. Um, so look for more inf coming out on that later. Uh, so just a reminder, everyone, if you like what we're doing here, please be sure to leave a thumbs up and ring that bell so you're notified when next video is, is coming online. Uh, if you like what we're doing, we are on Patreon. Please feel free, if you'd like to support us, to help us be able to buy more filament and maintain the printers that we use on the channel here. That helps immensely. And, of course, we do have the affiliate links that support us down in the links uh, in the description below. So. Uh, any support through those is much appreciated to help keep the channel going. So with that, I hope you have a great week, and I bid you aloha.